The creation of a Jewish public sphere did not happen last year. It didn't happen two years ago. It's been an ongoing problem, uh, pro program of this community. We've lost a number of great leaders this past year. Um, Maury Zing Zimring, uh, we lost um, uh, Julian Edison just a few months ago. And earlier this spring, we lost a former board chair, a man by the name uh, that doesn't even need to be said, but Thomas R. Green. To commemorate that and as part of our next stage of the program, I want to invite two of the great leaders of our present and uh, recent past, uh, Michael Steinberg and Barry Rosenberg, the former CEO of the organization, to come up and share their own reflections a few moments so that we can remember together the legacy of Tom Green. Uh, please go. Okay, Barry. Thank you, Andrew. Um, and thank you for this opportunity to pay tribute to a truly amazing man. Um, Tom Green was my hero. Um, in my career at Jewish Federations, I was privileged to work with 12 board chairs, each of whom I greatly admire and respect for their passion, their commitment, and their incredible skills. However, although Tom's board chairmanship in 1987 to 89 preceded me, he was the volunteer leader I actually worked the most closely with throughout my 20 years at Federation. And Tom also served on the executive of the Jewish Agency for Israel, as national vice chair of United Jewish Appeal, and as chair of endowment development for the Federation system, the National Federation system. I actually met Carol first um, at a national meeting as she explained the new Lubin Green Supporting Foundation, an innovative philanthropic model that the Greens brought to St. Louis and has now been emulated by others. And although Carol and Tom and the Foundation's generosity is well known, I think relatively few really know the true extent of his involvement and his impact. Despite his business success and numerous leadership positions, he never wanted or sought the spotlight. However, he was the person you went to when you had a tough problem, when you needed advice, when you wanted to launch a new initiative. He guided the Jewish Federation through many tough issues, like the battle, unfortunately not successful, to save the Jewish Center for the Aged, and for the successful effort to secure the JCC's financial future and security. Whenever I called, and some days I spoke to him three or four times, Tom was ready to listen, offer advice, write a generous check when needed, and then ask others to join him. And Tom was a team player. He was assertive, unquestionably, and would argue his position. However, despite his influence, which was considerable, if Federation officers or the board disagreed, invariably, he supported that decision. He believed in community decision-making and was ready to defend it. That commitment to community also informed Tom and Carol's and the entire family's philanthropy. Time and again, the Lubin Green Foundation provided the first gifts to undertake innovative pilot projects like Shalom Baby, the Jewish Information Service, and of course, the St. Louis Holocaust Museum and Learning Center. Tom, Tom chaired the museum's capital campaign and served as its first chair. And the Greens made a bold move in providing an initial $1 million commitment to launch a new approach to professional and volunteer leadership development that evolved into the Millstone Institute and JPRO STL. However, it was really around Israel that Tom and I bonded the most. His commitment to the Jewish state was incredibly deep. He loved to visit, making innumerable trips and engaging with Israeli leaders. Tom was one of the last group of international leaders who would just hop on a plane at a moment's notice if Israel called. Four times a year for Jewish agency meetings, leading dozens of trips for political and community leaders, including Governor and former Senator Mel and Jean Carnahan, Attorney General Jay Nixon, Mayor Francis Slay, and Chancellor Mark Wrighton. And Tom was just as ready to fly off to Russia to support Soviet Jews, Paris to study the issues facing the Jewish community, or run to the Knesset to lobby on the issue of who is a Jew. Likewise, his passion was evident in his longstanding support of APAC and the Jerusalem Foundation. Tom often related a conversation he had with another national leader 
He told the story of driving into Jerusalem late one night with the lights of the expanding city twinkling. You know that vision if you come into the city. And they looked at it and they agreed that in some small but important way, and I think it was probably more than small, they had had contributed to the miracle that is Israel today. Tom and I shared a belief that relationship between St. Louis and Israel needed strengthening. And taking advantage of a new program, both of us traveled to Yokneam and Megiddo many years ago and returned convinced that these were communities we could partner and build the future with. Tom served as the first chair of Partnership 2000 and visited the region several times a year to review programs, progress, evaluate new ideas, and finalize budgets. He built deep relationships with the two mayors and won the love and respect of the community, professionals, and residents. Tom was also an active fundraiser for Federation and other causes. He was instrumental in obtaining the lead gift to build the Allen Hoffman JF and CS offices. It was my job to speak to Tom every year about his annual contribution. And despite that, one didn't really solicit Tom Green. Invariably, he would call me and say he was ready to make his gift. In some ways, Tom solicited himself perhaps with a little nudge from me from time to time. An example comes from the Second Lebanon War. Based on the enormous needs of that moment of time, we had been asked to accept an aggressive emergency fundraising goal, over and above our annual campaign. Now, like most of us, he had already given some thought to what he wanted to do. And he was also thinking about all the other commitments he had made, and they were many. He already had a number in his head. I met him, met him at his office to plan out the uh, opening kickoff event. So many of you were there. And when he told me the number, I gave him a little look. And I said, you know, what you do is going to set the pace for the rest of the community. He looked at me, he smiled, and he said, you're right. And he doubled his commitment to six figures immediately. With that pace-setting gift, we achieved our goal, raising over $2 million. It was also a privilege to work with the entire family for many, many years. At his funeral, Tom's daughters and the grandchildren spoke eloquently and with great love about his powerful commitment to family, his intense involvement with his grandchildren, his playful side, and a few of his quirks. And permit me just a few additional observations and recollections. Let me tell you a story. I've got lots of stories. And with that, Tom launched into what seemed like his favorite pastime, telling and retelling stories about his family, growing up, or political figures. And when Tom was ready to relate a tale, there was no stopping him, even in the middle of someone's dinner speech. And there were times in Israel on trips when I heard the same story three times in the same day. Despite his wealth and generosity, as his family explained at his funeral, he was personally frugal and completely unimpressed with the trappings of power and money. Many times I'd bump into him at the supermarket reading the paper and having his lunch of a bowl of takeout soup. He was incredibly loyal. If you were his friend, he'd stick by you and do whatever he could to help. Nothing demonstrated that more than his devotion to Leo Wolf and the success of the Holocaust Museum. And Tom was a trusted mentor to many of today's top community leaders. I have many memories, including the night in Yokneam when he slammed the tr a door tr uh, tr uh, trunk of a car on my head. <laughs> he always claimed it made me a better executive. <laughs> But one memory stands out. At the height of the Second Intifada, federations held an annual our annual General Assembly in Jerusalem as a statement of solidarity. Tom helped lead that delegation. And one evening, thousands of us marched through the streets in the Machne Yehuda market. The vegetable and fruit vendors were cheering us. And I walked with Tom, listening to his stories. That was Tom, always there. Many have commented that he was bigger than life, and one of the marks of such a person is that you don't really need to say their last name. Their first is enough. In St. Louis, Yokneam Megiddo, and Jerusalem, you just had to say, Tom. Every nonprofit executive needs at least one champion who will help you with the tough times, support your unconventional ideas, run interference, and slam you on the head when you need it. And for me, that was Tom. He was always there always supportive, always willing to go first, always willing to provide just what the community required at that moment. Yes, he had some quirks, but that only made, those only made us love him more. Barbara and I extend our continued condolences to Carol 
and the entire family. May the memory of Tom and all that he did be a blessing and source of comfort to us all. Thank you.